Okay, hello everyone. Now, at this point in my life, I'm going through some major, major changes. There's a lot of big stuff happening, and I have decided to mark this point in my life with a self-portrait. And while I'm cranking out the drawing, I figured I should take the opportunity to show you a technique that has greatly influenced my painting and drawing styles. And when I was learning how to draw, it really took my drawing ability to the next level. The technique I want to show you is called sfumato. It is a word, it's an Italian word that means to vanish into smoke. And it is one of the four Italian Renaissance principles coined to achieve realism. That's what they were going for in the Italian Renaissance. So this is not something you would typically use for cartoons. This is something you would use for portraiture, landscapes, realism. Now, whenever you want, I want you to go look this stuff up. I want you to go look up examples, and they're going to show you the Mona Lisa and a couple of other Renaissance paintings, but people still use this today. This is not something that has gone out of practice. A lot of artists use this stuff even if they don't know what it's called. Now, as artists, we are visual people, and we learn visually. So now, I just want to jump right into it. Basically, the idea behind Sumato is that very rarely will you ever find a straight line in nature. Most objects will have a curve to them, allowing light and shadow to wrap around them. To emulate those effects, artists will use value, gradients, and softness to achieve those realistic effects. As I continue my drawing, I'm going to pick out a couple of spots to show you where I use Sfumato. Sfumato is particularly useful for drawing hair. Let's move to my beard. My beard is fuzzy, so it will seem to evaporate into shadow. We need to eliminate these lines. As I look at my reference photo, this is one of the darkest areas of my picture. In here, I'm going to make it really dark. And over here is shadow. This is a great place for sfumato. Compared to the shadow, my beard is very slightly darker than the shadow color. You can still see that there is a line here, but shadows are what you cannot see. So, when I cannot see my beard evaporating into that shadow, I will create a blurriness right here where my beard is. And it gets very, very dark in there. I bring it down here and on my hand is a shadow and in that shadow I can't see this area right here I don't understand it so it's going to be blurry under here like I said hair is fuzzy so I'm going to eliminate this straight line and make it a little bit darker under there not as dark as over here I'm actually going to create lines onto my neck to create value on my neck and I will bring that right over into my beard. It won't be as blurry as this side over here. While I'm here I might as well show you how my arm compares to my beard. So right now I'm gonna make a pretty dark line right here just to give me an idea of how dark I want my values. Right here on my arm I send down a line for a, a shadow indication and it goes down here and it's pretty dark in there. This is pretty dark as well. Two shadows are meeting right here, however the light source is coming from that direction. So behind my arm is actually a lot darker than either of these shadows right here. Because my arm curves and wraps around and I also have hair right here this edge will be blurry, yet also darker than this shadow and this shadow. To do that, it's very easy. I'm just going to cover all this area and make it blurry. Make it blurry to the point where my gradient from here wraps around to here, and this wraps around to here, making this the darker point in my drawing. Just remember to stay true to your values. In paintings, definitely in the Renaissance, what you'll usually see is sfumato in the eye, in the eye in the shadow. A lot of lines in here, as you can see, and this probably needs some work too. But, over here, usually these values, and you'll see this in a lot of Rembrandts, which I love, this is very, very 
imperceptible. You don't really see much of this. Those slight hints of form are exactly what you need. And all these values are pretty much the same. And in a drawing, it's not too crazy to just start drawing over it. Make sure you get rid of all these little pockets of light that you might have missed in your drawing. Those can actually drastically change what you're trying to convey. very important where you put your values at this point because this greatly determines your form. You'll find the best examples of Sumato in shadows and in hair and things you quite don't understand. However, you can find good examples of Sumato in the light. Right here on my neck is probably the brightest part of my skin, and this chair is actually very dark. So, in order to create realism here, I would match the value of this chair with this line I've created to illustrate my neck. However, often you'll find in curved objects, there's a shadow peeking around things that often seem like they're in the light. So I'm not going to be afraid to bring a little bit of value when I'm drawing this chair over onto my neck, but it will be barely imperceptible. That's one of the keys to Spumato, is matching your values. That's it for the demonstration, but I would like to leave you with a couple of points. Tip 1. Have an eye for value. Make sure that your line values are similar to its surrounding values. Tip 2. Know where to place your gradients. Tip 3. Use softness and blurriness. Those are the keys to sfumato. Which brings me to my last tip. How to hold your pencil. Imagine this is a surface. What you should not do is hold your pencil perpendicular to your surface. You have a very fine point and that creates very harsh marks on your surface. Hold your pencil to the side with a light touch where you have more surface area on the edge and that way you can make an easier and more controlled mark. I'm getting a little impatient because I really want to finish my painting. So that means that this is the end of the tutorial. Now, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask me in the comments below or on any social media. And if you'd like to keep updated with me, following me on Instagram or subscribing to me on YouTube is the best way to do that. Until next time, I will see everyone later. And remember, light kind of wraps around here and it creates a form. This is actually a little bit lighter around here than it is over here. Because light moves in waves, dog.